special day. We had a technical difficulty leading up to this moment, but it's not taken away from this. Give each other a, a hand in applause for just being here this morning. Our hope at Castle is that this would be a moment of celebration and inspiration that unites us together for a greater good and sends a powerful message of resilience. Or as we say at Castle, a nevertheless moment. We believe that the mural paints a bigger picture than just this one wall, and that the picture is painted in the lyrics of the following song by Anna Dazine and Castle Worship called Jubilee. It's also our prayer. Thank you for being here.
Thank you, Adam. Good morning, everyone. This is a very special day here in the city of Norwich. I'd like to start by introducing some of my fellow council members, President Pro Tem Joe DeLucia, Tracy Berto, Darrell Wilson, uh, President of the local chapter of NAACP, Sheila Hayes is with us as well, our city historians in the back, Dale Plummer, our uh, NCDC president, uh, Kevin Brown, Suki Legrito with Global City Norwich. Um, so we're here to celebrate this, the artistry that now lives off this whole edifice of a building. And it's a message about hope. It's a message about our past and how hope. So you think, my apologies. My back was to you when you came in. I apologize. Um, it's always that way. <laughs> This is a magnificent mural, and I hope it's the first of many more to follow. I think that's something that we in the city can help encourage, support. And I want to thank all the people, in particular the artists who's responsible for this, those who contributed to it from a financial perspective. You'll hear more about that shortly. Um, I also want to give a big welcome to Vice President Donna Hanley of Backus Hospital, who I believe you'll be hearing from shortly. As well. So enjoy this day. Remember there's a Juneteenth celebration right down the street. It begins at 2 o'clock. Please participate. It's all about us sharing and enjoying each other's cultures and learning about each other. That's why we do it. Thank you all very much. And Adam, thank you for all of your leadership. Thank you, Mayor. We would like to now honor our Jubilee Park premier sponsor. Bacchus Hospital. Bacchus has not only displayed a generosity, but its enthusiasm and encouragement in supporting this community building initiative has been a very special part of this project. Please welcome Donna Handley, President of Bacchus Hospital and Senior Vice President of Hartford Healthcare. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me from here? Thank you and good morning, everyone. Juneteenth is a special celebration, and we see reminders of its important literally all around us as we gather here today. Juneteenth is a sign of transformation, from enslavement to freedom, and so we are transforming this small park into something beautiful and welcoming. It is a sad reminder of delay and decay. It took more than two years after the Emancipation Proclamation for means of freedom to reach the enslaved people in Texas. Thanks to the hard work of so many people, look at how quickly this project has come together. The time is always right to do what is right, Dr. King reminded us. So today, this park and this mural stands as signs of positive action. And Juneteenth looks back on our sad and horrible division and looks ahead at the big work in front of us. Today, Pastor Adam Bowles turns the Holy Scripture to remind us that we are called to be the repairers of broken walls. The stunning mural recalls James Lindsay Smith's enduring question, how many mighty obstacles must fall? And that is why I am so proud that Dr. Hospital is part of this transformation, part of this history. Because nearly 130 years ago, a group of Norwich residents got together to build a hospital for the people of this community. They did that thing to ensure health and healing for the people of the Rose of New England and beyond. It's a commitment my colleagues and I must renew every day and this day. Today's Bacchus Hospital is still a proud landmark in our city and region. But increasingly, our work must be expanded outside the building's walls. To truly heal, we must reach into our communities, participate in work to make them healthier and safer places. Our mission calls us to partner with elected leaders and volunteers, community members, and organizations, just like this. Look around this morning, 
and you can see that together we are a powerful force for help. Together we can transform, repair what is broken, hear what is right, and look ahead. It is such an honor to be here as part of this changing celebration and this moment of transformation. On behalf of my colleagues at Back of Paco, thank you so much. And a personal thank you to Keith Fontaine from Back to Hospital for sparking so much of this connection. I really appreciate it. One of the beautiful things about the first phase of this initiative is the widespread level of collaboration and community support, as you can see, looking around. We're going to take just a few moments here to acknowledge our sponsors and supporters. It's more than a formality. It's actually a very special part of this project. At the end of the acknowledgement, we can all uh, show each other some honor with applause. In addition to Back to Hospital, we would like to thank the following sponsors. A landmark mural sponsor, you'll see the names of the different levels. The Community Foundation of Eastern Connecticut. Stephanie Clark, the program officer, she may or may not be here. She was thinking about coming on her way. She's way to where is she? I want to see what. Hi, Stephanie. You can all wave back at Stephanie. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Landmark mural sponsor, the City of Norwich and the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition. Special thanks to Wendy Berry, the Executive Director, Sarbani Hazra, Norwich Arts and Culture Coordinator, Jessica Morasowicz, Funding Booster Program Coordinator, and the whole team there. They've been a fantastic support. Resilience Champion, Sustainable Connecticut, Joseph Dickerson, the Community Partnership Program Manager is on his way. But they've been a big support. Resilience Champion Global City Norwich, a special thank you to Liaison Suki Labrito. You've been a backbone to this project. Thank you very much. And of course, Kevin Brown with the Norwich Community Development Corporation. Kevin was helping me move chairs this morning. So thank you, Kevin, for all the work that you've been doing. Resilience Champion in loving memory of Bob Hall. We honor his wife, Jackie, and the rest of the family that are gathered here today. I want to just lift your hands up in the air. We have several members here. <laughs> Bob is a dear friend and member here at Castle, and we continue to cherish so many wonderful memories of his life. Jackie, your generosity was the spark for this whole initiative. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. Community advocate, Timothy Bowles. Dad, thank you for every conversation we have had on this project over many months and your steadfast support. Repairer status, which is the foundation of this vision initiative, Assured Quality Healthcare, owners Caleb and Samantha Rosemay, they have provided foundational support in more ways than one, and I know they're here, and I'm just going to raise the air for a little bit. But we have a category called Bowtie Boosters in honor of the Bowtie James Lindsay Smith is pictured with, as it's in his autobiography. Mohegan's son, Blake Cowart Jr. of the Cowart Seafood Corporation, someone we met in Wadsford, Virginia, as we took a tour down there to follow the steps of James Lindsay Smith's escape from slavery. His business came on board. Chelsea Groton Bank, the DaCosta family, the Sheep Art Gallery, the public art for racial justice. Special thanks, Sheila Hayes in the Norwich chapter of the NAACP, Sheila and I have met at Cream Coffee Shop in impromptu at the post office. We just kept bumping into each other. Thank you, Sheila. Dale Plummer, city historian. Dale has been incredible support to this project, helping us to get it right, to frame the story. Much appreciation. Regan Miner from the Norwich Historical Society, executive director. She's helped in so many ways. Uh, going out of the way to even say just recently, how can I help? And has been a fantastic 
support. Dave Bruce, State of the World Museum Director, Luckenville House President. They we appreciate your support as well. And the Harris Sisters Month Committee of the Otis Library. There's a Harris Sisters Month in April. Let me see if I got all the people on board. A lot of Sherman, Bob Farwell, Julie Mendez, Regan, Don Lankford, Kate Fields, Charlene, Joan, Joni DiMartino from the Prudence Crandall Museum. Crafts and Cliff Roasters, Max Trumbull, Todd, and the whole team have been such a support. And finally, I want to thank the Castle Church family. Every single one, I wish I could name them. I wish I could name every single member of Castle Church. I'm telling you, we got a special family here. You guys have been such a great support every step of the way. If you're not together with us every Sunday, we're not here at this wall. I want to particularly thank I want to particularly thank symbolically our leadership, Jono and Linnell Wibberley. Jono's been doing all the video and, and lots of other work, and Jono's my brother Mark, a fantastic job. Jono and Linnell, everybody. <laughs> Jane Hammer, our Castle Worship Director, Heather Dexter, Caleb and Samantha, Allison Kedden, Danielle and Ellen Upton Pepin, Celeste Warner, Richard and Amy Joseph, they are uh, leadership. Ben has done such a fantastic job with the sound. Mariah, Anna, Eddie, you know I'm going to forget people now, and I don't mean to. Joan Paddock, I'm going to give you a special thanks for all the times you've texted me a verse, texted me thank yous, and, and, and we believe together with some special things. I want to honor you as well. And of course, my family, because my family has to put up with the crazy ideas that come out my mouth all the time. And that includes my mom. Thank you so much, mom, for every conversation we have had. And the support that you have given. My wife, Teresa, who is guarding diligently, staying from falling down, probably unnecessary, but we're going to do that anyway. To my wife, Maria, says, to my daughter, Terry, who's in California, and also Ronnie, who's from my wife, Ronnie. From Victoria. And now a round of applause for everybody in five minutes that you're all here. We are so grateful for you. You've done such a wonderful job to get us to this point. Let me give you just a brief overview of the mural before we move on in the program. Listen, in 2020, Council began a ministry called Next Day Mercy. This idea was to promote healing. Healing has been a special word of the day. Along racial divides. The program is drawn from the biblical story of the Good Samaritan, who not only immediately helped the needs of an injured man of a different ethnicity, who was found suffering in a public place, but he came back the next day to make things right. We are in the fight for the long run. We believe healing takes time and work and people who instead of walking by the hurting to advance their own personal or political agendas and theories, decide to act with compassion and empathy with those right in front of them. Out of this ministry and a fateful trip to the grounds of the Prudence Crandall Museum in Canterbury came the idea to offer a more inclusive view of our city's history that resonated with the theme of resilience. James Lindsay Smith, who escaped slavery in 1838 before settling here where he became a community leader and pastor in Sarah Harris Fairweather, was one of the first black students at Prudence Crandall School, were contemporaries in the historic Jail Hill neighborhood just beyond Castle in that direction, if I'm pointing correctly. How did so many not know the legacy of these two prophets? And if you love marriage, how can you not appreciate such inspiring history? Nevertheless, in spite of, that's our model here at the church, or as we like to define it, it's the place between no way to win and nothing to lose. It's your lowest point when you think what's the point and that it all points to what only God can do. Smith described when he nearly gave up in his 1881 autobiography, which a team of us from Castle used to symbolically retrace his journey toward freedom. Sarah Harris had to endure racial hostility and violence 
when the wealthy parents of her white peers objected with lies that eventually stirred an attack by an angry mob. It's easy to celebrate the beauty of a finished work but forget the pain of the process. But it's out of the pain that the beauty emerges. The mirror is a testament, an anthem even, to not only their lives, but to all of us, and our own individual displays of resilience in the face of tremendous odds, including as we emerge from a pandemic. It's a call to love our neighbors of all backgrounds. It's a beacon of hope passed down through the generations from the likes of such legendary figures as Smith and Fairweather. Their message to us, don't give up, don't lose hope, don't stop now. For the quote of verse used by Smith in his book, in due season, you will read if you faint not. We're used to this by way down back. Daniel has scientifically timed how long it takes, our neighbor has scientifically timed how long it takes to see the mirrors pass by because he's been on site so long. <laughs> it's actually now my pleasure at this time to introduce to you the muralist, Ben Keller. Ben has not only created an inspiring mural <laughs> that has left our community for decades to come, but he has been an inspiration to work with. Ben got one of his early starts right here with a showing at the Wilhelm Gallery across the street. And has been a full-time muralist artist since 2018. He has done work based on sculptures at the Slater Memorial Museum at NFA, several beautiful murals in nearby Little America, racial justice murals across the state, and continues to expand his reach to places beyond Connecticut. People tend to come with the best of individual gifts and will understandably focus on the magnitude of this project. But I would like to honor you, Ben, for the depth of your character. Where are you, bro? To honor you for the depth of your character, your sense of adventure, your ability to quickly connect with people of all backgrounds. I'm proud of you. I can now count to you as a brother. My younger, crazy brother. <laughs> So when he gets a whiff of the coffee bean, roasting two buildings down from here, follows the scent inside the doors just to meet the owner, or races off to an alleyway just to explore a new urban jungle, or offers me to get matching mohawks at Jeffrey's Barbershop. <laughs> no, though, I'm not doing that. My favorite part of this project will forever be our time to live here on this corner engaging in dozens and dozens of conversations with people as they pass by and admired your work and struggle to put into words the overwhelming feeling at times of hope that they were just beginning to feel thanks to your leadership. Please welcome Ben Keller. Hey, uh, thank you, Adam, for introducing me. Um, so, I got a small little speech I wrote. Um, so, as you already know, um, my name is Ben Keller. I'm the mural behind this artist. I'm, I'm the artist behind this mural. Wow. There I go. Um, so, thank you all for coming out today to this unveiling. Um, I'll be on honored to have been a part of such an impactful vision. Um, there have been a lot of moving parts and helping hands that made this project happen. Um, this has been in the works for over a year now. Uh, so, it's exciting to be standing here now to reflect on all the leading up to this moment. Um, my hope is that this mural will begin unlocking a new season for the city with deeper levels of creativity. My desire above anything is that this mural begin unleashing fresh and hopeful life into this community and all those who encounter this space. If Jubilee will be the name of this park, then I believe that Jubilee will become the kind of city. So, thank you all for coming out today. And, uh, yeah.
we're to now introduce to you the models for this project, beginning with Olivia Langford. The Harris Sisters Youth Month Committee of the Otis Library includes Dawn Langford, a Harris family descendant. But we needed a model due to the fact that the resolution of the original photo of Sarah Harris was too low to use for this size wall. Dawn referred us to her daughter, Olivia. Olivia graciously agreed, and she has been such a pleasure to meet and to get to know. Please welcome Olivia Langford. over there because, you know, she's, this is huge for her, so, and this is all I could do, anything to put a smile on her face, so, here I am. Um, I'm not going to be up here too long because this dress is not made for the wind, so, um, I just want to say, um, as a descendant of the Harris family, I stand here incredibly humble uh, as we celebrate and honor the legacies of these two individuals. James Lindsay Smith and Sarah Harris Fairweather, who represent strength, resilience, and bravery. I truly hope that we all walk away from this moment knowing that we deserve a place here and that we can do anything against all odds. Thank you for all involved in making this happen in the Norwich community. And then, um, this is a very proud moment um, for all of us. Thank you. So mom is on FaceTime. She's a busy part at this class. Do you want to stand up with mom on FaceTime to show the crowd with her? Everybody wave to mom. Is she the part of all this? Everybody wave. Hi, Thank you. 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 That kind of thinking will be nice to feature someone right here in marriage as the model for Smith. Perhaps Robinson Charlotte and the cats, castle worship leader was an obvious choice. His own story of resilience and his journey to Norwich after being displaced by the 2010 earthquake in Haiti gave us an opportunity to celebrate another storyline, the contribution of our cherished immigrant community in the city, if we could clap for our immigrant community right here in the city. And in this case, with Robinson's Haitian roots, the fact that Sarah Harris Fairweather's uh, ancestor was likely Haitian, it gave us the chance to celebrate our Haitian brothers and sisters. Yes, we can clap for that. Please welcome Robinson as he sings, A Change is Going to Come by Sam Cooke. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All the time I say, thank you to my wonderful God, without the power to restore, and he is everything that I need. Also, I want to say thank you to Pastor Adam. My friend, one of the great leaders of the community, it is an honor to be here today to represent this legendary man, James Lindsay Smith. The reason is autobiography and following the step that he took to stay slavery with my fellow brothers, John O'Connor, Alex, and Adam. I learned from his faith, from his veterans, and his search for freedom. I was more impressed by his determination to be a good person, not letting his past define his present character. And he heard about Rocky, just on this week, encourages us to give our heart to wisdom, to straighten ourselves from selfishness and living for the good of others. As I look at story, I look my story, I can see how we share a common story. For him, it was a slavery to freedom 
and to a better life and knowledge. And for me, it was this in my country, Haiti, after a devastating earthquake that killed more than 200,000 people, and to, be, to seek a better life here and knowledge. To me, it is a day that I will, ne I will never forget. Thank you all for being here to share this memorable moment of his story. That's the song I'm going to That's inspired the journey that we went through. You know, that's what I do. No, it's just for like it. I was born by the river. Hey, 
Hey, one more round of applause and we still around here. What? 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 So I was asked to, uh, of course, be a part of this. I was asked to be a part of the project with Otis Schneider, with Sarah Harris, and the Harris sisters, and my legacy. Um, I jumped on it. I'm very excited. I'm very thankful. Um, I wrote a poem, but I'm, I want to do another one first because I need to just um, pay homage and be thankful. <coughs> Our ancestry is not in the dot com. It's in our stories. I'm an old traditionist. Call me Green on the Great. Keeper of the scripture. African Arab man, look at his body in the body for From Plymouth, the trench star rock. Smell when I'm cooking. With no pull or no pen. Just the mere vibration of an um to Brooklyn, my king was took it. The bottle could manifest, no destiny could manifest. No database could determine. I give the gas face to Germans, Englishmen, Frenchmen, Dutchmen, and any African who sold beautiful black children like vermin. Our ancestry is not an adapt column. My sister tells me, tell the kids. I'm talking square kids. Love that is for every elder who told me their time stories. From Chicago Zoo to Timbuktu, I pass the point from me to you. It is my duty for the divine. These stories are etched in my mind like the universe and Ishmael's back. Who would have? Ahab would never have jacked. Call me three of the great and make no mistake. They injected an aroma at the brown Molly skin. CIA Malcolm and Feminist children. A nightmare Martin's dream. Smashed John Lennon like a beetle. Gave it to Gandhi in the gut. Said Ayla Kuti, HIV Kuti. My son, Muhammad Ali, is a mute. A cancer cockroach cortex. Slip Michael Mickey. JFK Bobby Kennedy. Liquefied the rumor. Shot to Pastor Cole and Blaine Biggie. Believe me. I know you sound absurd. I'm a storyteller. I capture every word, verb, vowel, and phony to say what I mean and mean what I say. I don't dare the devil under pale moonlight without my mother's permission. Your purpose is to listen. Pass condition to the next generation. Make them aware of what they're facing. Come prepared, not complacent. Time to wait and say what you waiting for. I'm an old traditionist. I'd be commissioned to give it to you raw. Like ODP to see you sickness coursing through my arteries, piercing like archery. Demanding an octopus. It's you and me, me and you. Tell your story. It's what you just say to do. From sun up to Michael Brown down. It's going down, little fish. Swim or drown. Jonah, you're well. And multi dick these cats before the key of ancestry incessantly. And it senses me. A thriving sense to be the agent who tries to impress me. And all I need you to do is to play these parables like Messiah models. And marvel in the prodigious plan that you're part of. Now help me. And help me help society cast these demons that taught me. Our ancestry is not in a dot com. This is not story. I'm an oral traditionist. Call me Guya the Great. Okay, now I'm ready. Then. You gotta get the boogies out. Um, so, when I was asked by an honor chairman to be part of the Harris Sisters Legacy, the Harris uh, Month. Um, like I said, I jumped on the um, the opportunity. And she sent me some information, research, and so on and so forth, and you know, I was looking through it, 
And time and time again, unfortunately, when it comes to our ancestors, the documentation is not the most accurate, not the best. It talks about them being property, being sold, nothing about their humanity. And um, so I kept moving over, moving over, and I noticed that the school was burnt down because Buddhist Kalenda was teaching Africans how to live rape themselves. And um, yeah, this poem came from that. Uh, and this poem is titled, The Ashes Were Part of the Plan. For Sarah Harris, Mary Harris, and Putin's Crandall. Not even the classroom, ignited into ember, could make me quit. Ambition, burning like the gallant walls of Putin's Crandall. My soul sang the prelude to the blues, etched between the integrated lines of the notebook. Announcing my name as the first African descent pupil to approach prudence with a spirit letter from the principle of Psalms. Teach me like you teach them. A spirit letter from my sister. Teach her like you teach them. A spirit letter for diasporic women across the continent. Teach us like you teach them. Connecticut black laws, borrowing colored out of state students. Credit on loop. The curses written by the hand of the Lord himself. Not even the stout of flame, saving the Canterbury landscape could char such sacred parchment. Our brain ain't a simple sentence. Study the lexicon of love. Steer the coals of your internal incandescence like scolding and spikes, assembling a railroad, traveling underground, beneath Rome Sea, where farms safeguard flowers, blossoming on top of the ruins of racism. The ashes were part of the plan. Daughters of Senecopa, reach back to retrieve your heritage. Reach back like the neck of a heron, folding back to place the egg of ancestry on its back. Looking back to douse the souls of white folk, fronting that our purpose would spread like the wings of a heron, flaming like the feathers of a phoenix, rising like the renovated walls of Buddhist Crandall School for colored girls who considered liberation and freedom wasn't enough. Thank you. Thank you for both of those readings. Inspire a number of times. Thank, thank you uh, for sharing that with us. For closing now, I just want to say a few things about where we go from here. The possibility of city transformation first captured our imagination with the story of Times Square Church and its impact on a previously drug-ridden, downtrodden neighborhood. The National Museum of African American History and Culture with its oversized porch entrance captures the power of place. Windward Walls in Miami was once an eyesore, but it's now a tourist attraction thanks to its many beautiful murals and other public art that preceded, not followed, economic investment. The High Line in New York shows the power of community when it comes together to take something broken and turn it into something beautiful. And Little Islands in New York captures the wonder of friends and family, children and so coming together to simply laugh, play, hold conversations, showing us the power of joy when it spreads across the city. Jubilee Park may be a smaller venue than these sites, 
but already it's proving to be a replica model itself of city transformation. The park gets its name from a section in James Lindsay Smith's autobiography in which he described his reaction to the Emancipation Proclamation as an understanding that the moment would be a jubilee for generations to come. Jubilee, a joyous celebration of freedom. When Ben started preparing the wall for the mural, he noted the symbolic significance of the years of layers of paint that was finally coming off to make way for something new. Let's not stop with one wall. Soon, Yale Urban Design Workshop for Community Input will begin work on design plans that we hope will be completed in the spring, then funding, then construction. Let's work together to create a generational space here on this site with an impact that reaches beyond our beloved downtown and to other places in desperate need of hope. A vision isn't just a happy image of the future. It's a fight for hope that others stuck in the wrong parts of history and the indifference of the present are unwilling to see. And let's go in this with eyes wide open. By the grace of God, as Isaiah 58 verse 12 says, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. And you will be called repairers of broken walls, restorers of streets with dwellings. Or as another version puts it, some of you are called to make your communities not only livable again, the vibrant again. Let's do that together as we go from here, the reading for a bigger vision. One more time for Ben Keller, the artist, the girl from Rachel, who's a sister who's been such a blessing to this project. Ben, come out here, man, one more time, man. One more time. Everybody on your feet for the name of the hour. On your feet, thank you for all you've done. Thank you everybody for coming. We appreciate the support. Better things to come. God bless.